Good morning, good morning. Well, almost afternoon. For some of you, it is afternoon. Welcome to our homestead. This is Tammy Trier with TrierWilderness.com. Oh, as you can see, I am, I am sharing with you today with a full wet head of hair. Um, today was a much needed self-care morning, so I apologize for the delay, but uh, definitely needed to take care of myself this morning. Good morning, Miss Krista Jo. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Okay, it is still morning here, so I can still say that. Uh, thank you. I don't feel that this morning, but thank you. Thank you. I'm coming around. Um, we have been in heavy pursuit of elk and deer. Um, last Wednesday when I was talking to you, it was our last no, Thursday was the last day for cow. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we hadn't gotten anything yet. Thursday night, I let a buck, a white-tailed buck walk. And we I realized later in the early wee hours why. Um, the mountain man did get his cow that evening, and she was absolutely huge. She looks like a beef hanging on our meat pole, um, which was an extreme blessing Good morning, Terry. Good m afternoon, Miss Courtney. <laughs> so we have, and I confirmed this, that we have roughly a thousand pounds of potatoes. Granted, we've given a lot away. Um, and we have a massive elk hanging on the meat pole. So God is good. Um, I was really excited about that experience. Also, one of our friends offered to go with and help get her out. Um, but Glenn had declined. We are really enjoying this season to be able to do things together. Um, all these nine years we've been here, this is the first year that we've been able to hunt together. We've been entertaining other people and it has been absolutely enjoyable. We are also empty nesters this year, so it just makes it really awesome to be able to share in these experiences. So. We got out there and she was way, way, way back in there and she was down the mountainside. Whoa, the cat almost took out the tripod. So it was um, a lot of work, but I was so excited because my, my new theme for myself or my new motto is no limits. I've been really pushing myself through this hunting season and um, just pushing myself through my day to day. Uh, trying to increase my abilities and while we were out there I definitely had to push myself a lot and um, at 1230 a.m. I realized why um, I passed up on that buck uh, because we would have had to take a nap before we processed another animal so I was really grateful for that my body was extremely sore when we went to bed that night, however, I woke up the next day and I was not sore anywhere and I was extremely invigorated. So that was really, really huge. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, George. Yes, George is from Alaska. He is my, uh, I'm living vicariously through George. Um, meat pole is full and firewood shed is. Life is good. Yes. Woodshed could use a little more, but hey, we are, we are feeling rich. Yes, I feel the richest whenever I have a freezer full of meat and a wood pile full of wood. Exactly. And the uh, comfort that comes with that and uh, reassurance that we're good through winter is also priceless. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Good timing. Just got home from town. Awesome. I knew I delayed for a reason. <laughs> I hear the mountain man coming. He was checking and resetting some traps this morning. I shared with you guys that I um, all of our big jobs that we had just totally withered away. Uh, we kind of had a weird feeling about that, like that that was something that was going to happen and weren't sure really why. And uh, sorry, I just, I hit something that I didn't want to in here. Okay, there we go. And um, it's been really an unusual time here. Um, so we do have a small job coming up Monday. God has told us to just wait. So we've been waiting. We had somebody from Wisconsin come to look at the house twice who is very interested still. We had someone else come Sunday look at the house that is very interested. So this is a, an absolutely 
weird and unheard of time of year to be moving if that's what happens for us, but we're trusting. So that's why today's topics are what they are, hunting, breaking through, and the courage to obey. And those are all things that are, are difficult. Um, George said, still has some time on the woodshed. Mine is a little lacking. Yeah, I mean, and the one thing that you really hate is having to forage it and harvest it during the winter um, when the snow's on the ground. However, sometimes that makes it easier to be able to drag logs and so forth. But, wow, something big just flew over. Probably that eagle again, like last week. That was so awesome. Uh, I think it was just a raven. But anyway, you know, Life is is always an up and down, and we've redirected our attentions to what we feel God is leading us to do. We have new products in the works. I have been working on our um, shop and our store all week in between hunting and getting out hunting early morning and evening, um, so hence why I needed to do a little bit of treatments this morning. I, I've been We've been exhausting ourselves. It's it's just a it's a pace that uh, neither one of us like, but we needed to reassure that we had meat in the freezer. So um, George gets it. Many of you get it. Um, it's it's the way we live, and uh, we don't go out to the grocery store and purchase meat. We can't afford to go purchase meat, and I wouldn't eat that if somebody paid me. Um, so this is good, clean, wholesome meat that's going to go in our freezer. So. You know, sometimes you just have to push a little extra hard to get things, you know, to get done, to get things accomplished. And um, it's definitely, it definitely took its toll, but I'm feeling much better and I'm just going to, no limits and keep, keep taking care of myself. But we feel um, that our new products will be a little bit of a light in the dark and in a, a way that we can share a little bit of our love. They are very, it's a whole lot of very custom and unique traditional pieces that we are adding to our store. And they are very close to being finished. Um, he has been making parts of them. I have been making parts of them. So we're hoping by the end of the week we will have something together that we can photograph and share and start pushing. We're also going to do a grand opening on our store and have a discount available, which I will share on our page. But, um, I don't know. It's, you know, when, when you decide to follow God's will and you take his direction over yours, that's where the obeying part comes in. Um, it can be challenging. It can be exciting. Um, and, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's a way of life when you live out from the rest of the world. It is. And you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything. I've been talking about that a lot over the last couple of weeks on the benefits of it. You know, we aren't caught up in the worldly things. We aren't in the world every day. So we're not, I think our lives are so much easier, even though we're working hard to harvest meats and that stuff. This, this season will pass. And we will hit a season where our woodshed is full, our freezer is full. We have potatoes for the next 10 years. So I can be making potato chips with a fire going and actually doing, doing that and it be an enjoyable experience. I'm not rushing to make potato chips. I'm making them because we can enjoy them or french fries or a potato salad or whatever. I, I mean, that's all that we think about right now is all the different <laughs> things we can make with potatoes. Good morning, Miss Diana. Good morning, Kelly. Yes, I am glad you are with us this week too. Life makes more sense in the bush. It really does and it's so wholesome. Being, I, I have been giddy out in my hunting blind. I got up yesterday at 520, five, I don't remember, 520 I think it was. Did my devotions, got some coffee, went out to the hunting blind and just watched the world come alive. I have had so many awesome, awesome experiences out there. George, you will totally appreciate this. I had a, a young coyote serenading me and putting on a show on a stump. I did a video of that. It will be going live in the next couple days. Uh, that's what I spent Monday doing was sorting through all the hundreds of videos we've been filming. It's been crazy. Um, and, and editing. I think I edited 25 videos on Monday. So, But I'm out there. This coyote serenaded me. And then copper. 
sorry. I gotta yell at the kids. Get over here. Get over here. Girl. He's dragging his skull around from his cap. Get over here. She's gonna get herself good and sick. Get over here. Lay down. You're making me scold you on film again. Lay down. Lay down. She waited just like a kid, like a kid would wait when you get on the phone. As soon as they went live, she disappeared. Lay down. Now. Lay down. <laughs> All the way. All the way. All the way. Because I know what you're going to do. Stay there. Okay. Good grief. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Morning music. I love I love watching the world come alive too and and putting it to sleep at night. It's just it is such an amazing experience. I have some awesome photos of the it was a full moon and I had little I don't know what they were. They were some kind of a blue finch of sorts. They when you're when you're out and you're hunting, you're watching for change. Well, these little birds move all the time and that flash of movement and they have white on them too. So it makes you really it just catches out of the corner of your eye and out of your peripheral. And it was really crazy and they started kept coming across the field closer to me. And I was just getting ready to pick up the camera to record and one came flying in. There's like the blind has a roof and there's an opening in there and it came flying toward the opening and it just stopped and it was just fluttering like crazy looking at me. So it was, it was planning to come in the blind and I kind of threw it off. So it was kind of funny and I missed getting that. And I watched, I got to watch four cows last Sunday, which was two days before cow, uh-uh, lay down. I'm on to you. Lay down. Sorry. Good grief. It's like scolding the kids. Lay down. She's like, oh, mom. All the way. All the way. So, anyway, it has just been a tremendous time out there. I love being out there. I didn't get to see the cows during cow season, but I did get to watch them yesterday again. And, and that was pretty cool. There was, they came out of dark timber and I saw them, I pulled up on them. There was an opening down further. So I knew they were going to be running that direction. And I was just ready in the event that there was a bull in the mix, but no bull. It was just the two cows and the two calves. So, you know, it's just, it's awesome time being out there. It, it prepares all your senses. If you are looking for something to prepare you for a survival situation, sitting out in a hunting blind or in a tree stand or Walking through the woods very quietly, that will certainly prepare you for a survival situation because it gets all your senses going and in tune, and it's just an awesome experience. It's very, it's just very awesome. Good morning, Miss Marie. Kids will all just like lay like marshmallow. Yeah, they just do their own thing. How about it? <laughs> and they wait. There she did it again. She's sneaking off on me. I'm watching you. All right, anyway, yes, I'm just worried because she's going to get sick later from eating all that garbage. So I've been getting a lot of comments on our YouTube channel on these videos and how my, my transparency has been helping people and helping them to, that my message is just very timely. And for that, I am very, very grateful. I shared with you guys last week that... Um, we have been blessed with the opportunity to be on the cover of the new Pioneer magazine on the current issue. And in that issue, I had the opportunity to share my illness. And I am just praising God so greatly because since that has hit the stand, I have had people reaching out and, and um, thanking me for the article and wishing us well, but I've had so many more people reaching out to me who are sick and didn't know why or are going through the process or trying to go through the process and need guidance with the same illness that I had. So I was able to speak about breast implant illness and it just makes me, my heart sing to know that I am able to help and reach people. So that too has been a tremendous blessing. Krista Jo says, we spent our Saturday tracking a deer, my favorite part of hunting. Yeah, I, that is pretty exciting when you get to uh, track the blood trail. Um, we've had to do that. Um, I like it just as much when they just drop because out here it's so vast that when they just drop it's a it's a gift too that we don't have to go too much further to get them out of our woods and 
I was sharing with my one of the editors yesterday how awesome it is out here. You know, Krista Joe's from back east, so she has all the fall foliage, and, and many of you do as well. Our fall foliage is tall timber, massive vastness of tall timber, and yellow popping up in between, which is our tamarack trees. It is, it is a pine. Um, but its nettles actually fall off each year and they turn bright like fluorescent yellow and then they fall off. And it's it's been really awesome being out in the blind because every morning when I'm out, the one mountainside that I'm looking at keeps getting more yellow and, and filling in. So it's been pretty cool. It's just an awesome experience. And for those of you that do not hunt, I would really encourage you to learn. If there's somebody local to you that does hunt that could share with you and, and guide you and help you in the process, that is one of the best ways to get involved in hunting. Somebody that's been hunting for forever that would love to share their knowledge with you. It's also a necessity in most states that you take their um, hunter education, which I feel is really important anyway. If you're going out in the woods, you want to know your rules of your local area. Uh, I just had to take the local trapping education course. I had taken it before, but they put a new thing in place that if you didn't get your trapping license after a certain time frame that you needed to retake the test. So we all went and took it just uh, to see about new things that are changing, to see if you could learn anything new. It's very inexpensive. and highly recommended. This year I'm actually going to be setting traps. I've always been just following along on the trap line, but this year I'm going to be involved in setting traps as well. So it's important that you know what is required of you in the woods. The other thing is if you're not familiar with firearms, to have somebody local to uh, help you is really important to get the feel and the know-how of uh, a shotgun depending on your area. We were doing slugs in Pennsylvania in a shotgun. Um, out here it's rifle. So it just depends on your area and there were different parts where we came from Pennsylvania. There were different parts of Pennsylvania depending where in the area. Um, I was shotgun in one area and it was rifle on the farm. So it all depends but it's it's really important to educate yourself and to know what you're doing. Um, that's one of the things that always scares me out here is when there's such an abundant amount of hunters around because you don't know if they're ethical hunters and if they're following the laws, if they shoot at movement or if they identify what they're shooting at or if, you know, it's important to wear your orange. I mean, out here, you just have to be careful, you know, being that it is as vast as it is, you know, you're, you're shooting at something way across the way, but you need to be sure that there's nothing behind it too. So, you know, it might sound like there's a lot involved. It's just, it's just learning the process. It is so rewarding and the meat, oh my goodness, the, the game meat that we get is just so, ah, it's so good. We actually had been blessed with some grass fed beef and I, it didn't taste near as good to us as our elk. Copper, come here. <laughs> Girl, get over here. Leave that alone. Leave it. Come here. Come here. If the door wasn't so far away, I'd go put her away. Copper. Copper. No, get over here. Girl. You're going to get it. Okay, I'm done yelling at the dog. All right, let me see here. Uh, get her. Yes, lay down or you're going to be in big trouble. When they just drop, except when they just drop in the swamp. Yuck, yeah, right, exactly. I thought he would move off just a bit out of the swamp, but... Drop he did, right in the tracks, right in the swamp. Oh, yeah, right. Well, we always hope that they drop uphill so that we can just roll them down the hill into the bed of the truck, copper, or into the trailer or whatever. But, yeah, sometimes you have to do a little bit of extra working like we did. That was quite that was quite the work to, to get her out, but it was very well worth it. We got her out whole. Lay down. I see you stealthing. No. Girl, come here. Ay, sorry. This time I'm not going in and out, I'm just yelling at a dog. Good morning, Ken. 
Miss Kelly says, that's a scary part of bow hunting as well, being in camo and all. Knowing your surroundings and keeping your eyes open is key for safety. Yeah, exactly. Um, we always carry orange with us anyway, even when we are out. Um, bow hunting, you know, we'll have orange with us. I was actually out in the blind, I don't remember, the days are a blur at this point, but it was getting close to the time I would have gone back in anyway, and I was really watching this lower area because I wanted to know if there was something bedded down in there, and all of a sudden, there's orange. It's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And they weren't on our property, they were on the border of the property, but I mean, it was nice because he confirmed that there was nothing bedded down, but at the same time, that's nerving. Um, so I picked up my orange hat and just waved it so that he could see me in the blind and he moved on, but it's definitely, it is definitely, it can be nerving if, if there's a lot of people out. Archery isn't quite as bad because the um, arrows, granted if they're not a crossbow, um, and a lot of the newer bows do have some pretty uh, good length to them, but you know, a, a long bow and your older compound bows, you know, they, they don't go as far as your bullets are going to fly. But still, it is nerving. And, and it is important that you, you know, carry orange and are very aware of your surroundings. Like, like Kelly said, being out there, it, it's, you know, you're in camo. So not only are you looking for your animals, but you're being cautious of, of your surroundings so that if there are other people there, you can alert each other. Um, sometimes in the early mornings, uh, the mountain man was in a stand and he had a, f and my father-in-law too, had to um, turn on his headlamp and let somebody know that he was up in the tree. So, you know, you just got to be cautious um, and, and be aware of your surroundings. Like a kid, when you're busy, they get into things. Yes, I know she's driving me batty. Um, George says, commercially raised beef. Ooh, it has an off taste to me. I know. I, it was, this wasn't commercial, commercially raised. Um, this was a, a farm in Washington, um, that raises a, a smaller amount of, now it's the cat, um, grass fed beef. But it just doesn't taste, it doesn't have that really good rich taste like the elk does. It's just funny. I guess we've just grown so accustomed to it. When you're dealing with an elk or moose, it's a lot of work. Yeah, they are. They are a lot of work. They're massive, massive animals. This cow he got is just huge. Well, good morning, Miss Fluffy. Now I have a cat joining me. Um, to us, beef, even home-raised, naturally is a different taste. We prefer wild game. I know. I think we've hit that point, too. And we were very grateful. I love chuck roast. Chuck roast is my favorite cut of beef, and I did thoroughly enjoy enjoy that. Um, yes, Mike carries his 45 with him. I've had... <laughs> <laughs> I have had my 380 on me, but there are times when I carry the 44 too. When we went out to get the cow, we actually both had to pull our pistols because something was down there with her when we first got there. So that's another thing is being, I mentioned that last week is just being cautious because, you know, a lot of places, Wyoming, uh, probably Montana and, and uh, Idaho, oftentimes wolves or bears will come to the shot. So you've got to be really, really cautious um, and be prepared. You know, uh, bear spray, shotgun, you know, when you're going out to get your meat to make sure that you're not in danger. That doesn't hurt to be, I mean, it's it's necessary to be prepared. George loves a 45, yeah. And, and that's what the mountain boy carried was a 45. Yes, it tastes funny. Yes, the beef. It's so funny when you get accustomed to game meat. It is hard to eat other stuff. Um, keep her out of any meat. Guess deer meat can make a dog really sick, even kill them. Um, it's not bad. It's not that. It's that they just engorge themselves, and then they come in and they just yak all over, and it's just nasty. Um, some. It's. Animals, you know, like the game meat and stuff, it's not, it's something that we feed our animals at times too, so it's, it's okay, but um, sometimes there'll be animals left behind and they're laying there dead and you have to wonder if they were poisoned, so that's where we're a little more cautious as to giving them, giving them uh, some of the meats or letting them eat certain things. Copper, 
Get over here. Ugh. Devil dog. I should have known better. <laughs> Montana has bear attacks all the time in bow or gun season. Yeah, didn't you say that there were already so many attacks? I think you mentioned that last week. Yeah, it's really crazy. Um, and and you got to really be careful. Um, grizzlies are making their way to Idaho. I know they're in Montana and Wyoming. Um, they've been seen in, in parts of Idaho that aren't that far from us, so it's important to be careful in that regard too. But wolves are crazy. The mountain man used to guide pack trips back in Wyoming in the back country, and I, the one season from the trailhead back to camp, there were 13 dead elk, and they just had a, a, enough of a bite out of them to kill them, and they were left to lay, which is just horrible. They're killing machines, and, and that's why the wolf population needs to be brought down. In some parts of Alaska, you have less than 15 minutes to get out of the area because the bears come in like the dinner bell was rung. Wow. I believe that. I believe that. Kelly says, we feed wild game and never had an issue. It is richer and can cause digestive tract upset. Yes, I believe there has been three attacks already this hunting season. Yeah, that's... Yeah, one of our friends in Wyoming, oh, he got really, really mauled by the bears. It was really, really crazy. Um, just kept coming after him. So they are, you know, you got to be careful. You got to be prepared. You got to know your surroundings. You got to know what else is sharing the woods with you. You know, uh, this all sounds scary and, and may not sound worth it to some, but to eat that fresh game and to have that wholesome meat is really valuable. Uh, especially for us in our situation so um, and it's how we've lived for the last almost 10 years uh, strictly on that and that and our chickens but we don't have chickens right now so um, get in the game uh, I, I pat, kept passing up that little buck but I was I was ready to shoot him yesterday and he didn't show himself but I want to get my deer before rut comes in so they aren't it's not ruddy and I'm not out for the Boone and Crockett. I'm, I don't need a big rack on my deer because I can't eat it anyway. So that's not really what we're hunting. We're just basically hunting for meat. I, okay, Shelly said, uh, or Kelly, I'm sorry, said same in certain areas of Montana in regard to the bears coming in. So yeah, you just be aware of your surroundings. Be very aware of your surroundings. Now I want to share this with you. Um, this was actually today's uh, devotional, and I thought it was really good. Um, we're we're in a good place um, in regard to where we are personally. Um, our circumstances are very all over the place, up and down, and and just all over the place, and it can it can really cause dishevelment for people. Um, that haven't maybe walked through such circumstances before. God prepares us in life and um, I want to encourage you guys to keep seeking Him because that is why we are where we are and why we're so comfortable. And I know I just kind of abruptly jumped from hunting to this topic, but it's because of how we live that the whole thing kind of just progressed into this. Um, as a result of how we live, we have learned to cope with things I feel a lot better. Um, we aren't mixed in with the world on a regular basis. We created our own world. Not that we're naive or jaded or... Copper, come here. We've, it was a choice. It was a choice. It's a choice to live the way we do. It's a choice to be back in here the way we do. And it is a choice to focus on what we focus on also. George says, you actually do need to know what is going on around you. Nature is not necessarily nice and can be downright dangerous and cruel. Exactly. And you know what? The same applies to the world. That's kind of funny. It just kind of fits in with what I was going to say. Um, you know, our world wants us to be afraid and worried and pulling into what the world is sharing. But there is a different place that you can find in the world 
that you create for yourself and and it is a very rich place and I could not imagine what our world our lives would be like if God was not leading the way and that is one of the most important parts of everything for us is that we are seeking God's will not trying to well now this changed so we need to do this and we need to do that and this is where we're gonna go and this is what we're gonna do it wouldn't serve us very well in our circumstances right now with everything being so upside down but it wouldn't serve us good even if we were in a good place because being in God's will is one of the most wholesome places I have ever found he has had me wrapped in his arms for three years and has been nurturing me and healing me and he will be delivering us from this place that we're in but while we're in this place and while some of you are in these crazy places how how do you cope how do you how do you hang on how do you find happiness and joy how do you um, know which direction to go in how do you know what decisions to make all of this stuff can be very tiring overwhelming and cause great weariness the way we are living right now and what we are seeking and how we are doing it is not easy as I read through these things today you will understand it is not it is not easy but when when you seek him for your answers it is a great place of peace and wholesomeness when you continue to learn to keep doing it. It's no different than learning how to hunt, learning how to knit, learning how to cook, learning how to can, any of that stuff. It's a process. It's a process and I am where I am today because in my being as a result of the Holy Spirit and through the, in my, my grandparents way back instilling it in me, that there is something greater out there there is a God and he does love me and he does listen and me seeking him and me wanting to know my purpose in life and me wanting a relationship with him has created um, this place that I'm in see a beautiful girl take care Krista Joe and Diana says it keeps getting buffering. Oh, I'm I'm hoping that it's recording. I, f I found last two weeks ago at Mountain Bends, I really, it broke out so much. So hopefully you guys can hear me. But let me, let me read this. <clears throat> Are you at your breaking point? Psalms 27, 13. And give me some thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, Tammy says she hasn't had any issues. So maybe it's just internet. Okay. And Kelly says, pray, pray, meditation, and wonderful prayer warriors praying for us and giving godly information to keep us on the narrow path. Yes. You know, that is, oh, Kelly said to Diana, refresh your page. That could do it too. Thank you, Kelly. <sighs> there are... You know, our world, our world leads us to this crazy pace, this crazy feeling of needing to keep up this crazy pace that things are falling apart which they might be but there's something so much bigger and greater and better out there and Kelly hit on that a lot right there with what she had to say is those are are what keeps us grounded somebody asked me yesterday if I went if I did a Bible study yesterday and he kind of threw me off because I thought he meant did I go to a Bible study because we do Bible study every day. Every morning we do a, our devotionals, we pray together at night, you know, and, and that has strengthened our marriage, strengthened us to, together and individually at the same time. And it is really important to pull in. And I know that some of you, you know, that may not be your norm um, or something that you're familiar with, but there is, there is so much to gain. I gotta unplug here. There is so much to gain. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I really believe I would not be here doing this with you if I did not have the relationship with God that I do. Um, I couldn't imagine what our situation would be like right now. I couldn't imagine what it would have been like walking through this by myself or, or, you know, without him. Um, 
Okay, you guys are communicating together there. Okay, so let me read this. This is called, Are You at Your Breaking Point? Psalms 27, 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed. David was a giant killer, a psalm writer, and Israel's most popular king. But when the stresses of life brought him to his breaking point, he wrote, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Are you at your breaking point today? When you get to that place, one of the two things happens. You either break down or you break through. And we've all broken down. We've all been to that place. We've all been to that weak place, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how that happens. It's human nature. It's flesh. Um, and, it, and it's overwhelm. And it's also part of possibly at times not having a close relationship with him. And that's why I am sharing this today because we are at a place of breakthrough because of our chosen walk with him. So it all depends on what you do. David experienced a breakthrough because he knew the right formula. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. There's an old saying, the same sun that melts the butter hardens the clay. When trouble comes, you can turn against God because you've served him faithfully and don't understand why he's permitting you to go through such a hard time. Or you can turn to him for the answer. Nothing catches him off guard and nothing is too hard for him. He said, I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I will do all, yeah, I will do all my pleasure. You may be in the state of shock right now, but God isn't. Your circumstances can actually become a platform for him to dis demonstrate his unfailing love and care for you. So don't lose heart. He's going to bring you through the storm and bring glory to his name in the process. So you either can break down or break through. We've chosen to break through. At that point, we have a choice. It is an a powerful thing when God empowers us to keep going um, but like I said we would I would be lying to you if I said this was an easy this has been easy it has not been easy but it has been amazing and it's hard to put those two things together how can it be a lousy horrible hard time but be amazing because the walk itself has been hard but the blessings and his hand and his closeness has been beyond amazing really um, and, and I couldn't imagine our walk had we not had him in our lives. Oop. Alpha and the Omega. Yes, Charles. So the next thing that I want to share with you is the courage to obey. You know, we were, we were told a couple weeks ago to wait. That's hard news to receive when you are down to nothing you need to sell you don't know what will happen if you don't sell but at the same time he's telling you to listen and he's telling you to wait and you know that when he gives a command and you don't stay within that that your walk is going to get really really difficult so you know we've learned we've learned these lessons over time individually and as a couple so, you know, it, it was kind of fun actually at that point to be told to wait because we were both in the place of obedience and we were both like, all right, so we're waiting. And then when people came to see our house, we were kind of like, why? You know, it was just a very weird, weird thing because we are, we're waiting. So why are these people coming? You know, we were just under the impression we were here for winter. We don't know where we're going to be for winter. And he does. And, and he hasn't revealed that yet. And we're just rolling with it. And we're obeying. So let me read this. And I love this story. Job and Daniel are two of my favorite stories in the Bible. There's a lot of really good stories. But those are two that really stick out to me. Daniel is a great example of living with scriptural conviction. Even when doing so put one's life at risk. His experience in the lion's den took place when he was old, but it wasn't the first time he'd chosen to obey God rather than man. In fact, standing for his convictions had become the pattern rather than the exception of his life. A look at Daniel's life reveals the fruit of living in faithful obedience to God. 
Daniel stood up for his convictions regarding food. The Lord gave him greater knowledge, wisdom, and understanding than all the king's other advisors. God granted him favor with the kings instead of persecuting him for speaking truth. Kings promoted Daniel to the highest place of authority even though he was a Jewish foreigner. His obedience presented opportunities to speak about God. If Daniel had chosen to blend into the culture, the Babylonian and Persian kings probably wouldn't have noticed him. But since he didn't back down from his convictions, the praise, the God, I'm sorry, the phrase, the God of Daniel echoed in the chambers of those kingdoms and God was glorified. God used him to write scripture. Daniel was a trustworthy and obedient servant in the midst of a pagan culture and God revealed amazing future prophecies in the book he penned. Although we may not stand before kings in palaces or lions in dens, we too can be used by God when we practice uncompromising obedience to him. This is very true. You know, um, God, God asks us to do little things and he may ask us to do big things. Little things may be um, stopping and getting a sandwich and giving it to a homeless person and reminding them that they have worth when you hand it to them. Um, it might be uh, opening the door for somebody. It might be sharing your testimony with somebody. You know, we all have a story, whether you want to admit it or not. And you may not think that your story is a big story or worth sharing. But to the right person, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what they're doing. Copper. I don't know if she's messing with the cat or what. But you may not think your story or your testimony is big, but to the right person, it could be life changing. So we need to we need to remember that God is going to use us in all kinds of different ways, and it's been really amazing for us to see how God has been using us, how he's been using our testimony, how he's been using our transparency, how he has been enriching our lives, how he has been growing us as we walk this out, how we are finding that the closer your walk with him is, the easier the heart is. Um, he's always there. He, you know, I know many of you pray and you wonder if he's listening. Um, but he, he listens. It's his timing and we have to remember that. That's why we could be sitting here and just be totally irate that we're still stuck here and that our house hasn't sold and woe is me and me on our circumstances. But it's seeing the blessings. It's seeing the blessings in the most mundane things, in in things that didn't even go well, but there was a blessing in it. You know, when we were getting the, the elk out, we realized that our our winch was not working right. We could have seen that as a really, you know, something to complain about, but to us, it was actually something to be praising him for because that showed us that when we we got back we needed to work on the carburetor and get it running better because it would have really sucked having fallen a whole bunch of trees and being ready to pull them out and and spending the whole day getting trees out when we would have to go back and and work on the carburetor after we'd already dropped trees that other people would then probably take so there's a blessing you got to see the blessings no matter how big how small how hidden they are even if you have to seek them it, it's it's part of the walk finding the blessings makes the walk so much richer um, whether you're going through good times or bad times and obeying him is hard but it it keeps you on the right path it keeps you on the right path and it takes you into his will and that is where the amazingness is going to come from okay Kelly says, my morning devotion scripture was Deuteronomy 8.16, goes along with what you are saying. When in his word, listening to his small voice and following what he lays on, on your heart. It's a really amazing thing. I had the opportunity to meet a beautiful young girl the other day through his promptings. And it took him, to, he had to prompt me twice. It was second guessing 
And I've got to learn to stop that. That is one of my downfalls is I think I hear him and I second guess it. And I just need to act on it. I need to act on it because if, if it is something that is really wholesome being put on your heart, it is definitely a God thing and just act on it. And I'm really grateful that I did act on it. I got to have a really amazing conversation with somebody who needed to hear my testimony. And it, you know, certainly renewed me hearing hers too. It was a very powerful, very strong testimony of her own. So um, it's really amazing. It's really amazing what God prompts us to do if we're willing to listen. Diana says he is Elroy, the God who sees. I know that he sees you and Glenn in your situation and that he sees Craig and me in ours. That brings great comfort. It sure, it sure does. It sure does. Because that is one of the greatest things through this is despite how um, ugly it might be when you really take the time to analyze it. And again, I don't do that a whole lot because it's a lot of stuff I can't control. So rather than spending my time there, but knowing that it is a really rough spot to be in, um, knowing that he is with us and that he is taking the time to guide our steps, he is inspiring amazing things in our in our lives and um, it's really awesome. So that is such a great comfort and you are absolutely right. And, and again, like Kelly said earlier, knowing that you have prayer warriors that you can go to when you're in these places is really powerful. And not a lot of people have that. Down below, there is a very long prayer list. And I encourage you to pray for those people. I'd like to ask for some specific prayers today. I'd like to ask that you uh, lift Chad up in prayer. And I'd um, like you to pray for my mother-in-law, Glenna. She had surgery yesterday and could use some prayers for healing. Um, pray for the mountain boy. He is, this is a tough time there at school. Um, just a slow time. And, and uh, they always say the first month is the hardest. He's doing really amazing. But it's just kind of boring to him. So uh, till they get really diving into things. So keep him in your prayers. I'd like you to keep George in your prayers. Doc, as I refer to him. Um, George is an amazing friend um, that has been traveling with me through my journey for almost the whole time we've been here, if not the whole time we've been here. And um, he could use some prayers today too. Charles has got a whole bunch on his plate. He could use some prayers and Diana and Craig could use some prayers as well. And uh, Kelly and Mike and Courtney are celebrating some amazing news. Courtney got her results back and all is good and stable. So they have been praising God. So praise God with them. And Tammy and her family have some heavy construction going on at her place. They could use some prayers this week. And uh, they have a shower coming Saturday for her daughter. And, and the new baby so keep them in prayer but the thing I'm getting at is if you do not have people surrounding you that you feel comfortable sharing with or that if you say you need prayer they feel like they need to dig all the details out of you and it makes you uncomfortable I get that you know when we when we pray for people we don't need to know all the details God knows them so it is you know I have friends who will message me and say, I really need prayer today. I don't want to share the details, but I really need your prayer. That's all I need. You know, some stuff is just personal and, and, and that's okay. That's, we need to be the prayer warriors that are just willing to pray and, and know that they need prayer, know that they've got a circumstance that is obviously very difficult for them and just pray for them. So. If you don't have those people to pray for you and you want people like that, just email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com or put it in the comments here if you feel comfortable um, or on YouTube. We, The people that are joining me today are tremendous prayer warriors. We have an amazing community of prayer warriors. So please don't hesitate to ask if you too need prayer. Keep my friend Starry in your prayers. She is in Georgia undergoing treatment for 22 days and could really use prayers of healing. And I want to share this last one with you. I thought this was a really awesome 
devotional. It's called Undercover Boss. Many of you may be familiar with the TV show. I'm not. I haven't had TV for over 10 years, so we're not really in tune with what's on the TV show, on TV. Excuse me. To us, it's more like garbage. A lot of There's a lot of junk. There's some good stuff on there, but we, ch we choose what we spend our time watching. So I wasn't familiar with this, but this is really awesome. This is a really good story. Um, Ezekiel 3.15, I sat among them for seven days. There's a popular reality show on American television called Undercover Boss. In it, the company owner goes undercover disguised as a regular staff member and works alongside the other employees. He or she gets to experience their daily pressures and problems, becomes familiar with their strengths and weaknesses, and finds out what is and isn't working. Some of the discoveries are truly eye-opening and lead to major changes that end up making the organization a more efficient, more profitable, and more enjoyable place for everyone to work. A good definition of the word understand is to stand in another person's shoes. I really like that. Really, really like that. That's what happened to the prophet Ezekiel. He writes, Then I came to the colony of Judean exiles. I was overwhelmed and sat among them for seven days. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. He said, Son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman. When did God give Ezekiel a message for others? After he'd spent seven days and nights sitting with people who had lost everything, people in deep despair and in need of answers. Referring to Jesus, the Bible tells us this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of these same testings we do. Your most effective ministry to others can come out of some of the experiences you're going through right now, especially the painful ones you'd like to escape and don't even feel comfortable talking about. The truth is, your greatest mess can turn out to be your greatest message. So let God work on you until he gets you to where you need to be. Stand in another person's shoes. To me, that is a really powerful message. And all three of these go together to me in, a, in, the, in the regard that so often we allow our stories to go unspoken and our difficulties to go un, unheard. I struggled with posting on Facebook for a long time with what we were experiencing because when you type things on Facebook, it's not like being able to be on this camera and explain in detail. People only get a small picture of what you're sharing. And when you share something that's negative instantly, you know, even if it has a positive swing to it, a lot of times people are picking up on the negative. And, and I always felt like I was complaining about my situation where really I was sharing the hard, but sharing the blessing along with it. And I think that is where this Facebook Live came from, is that I wanted to be able to share the raw and the real, but also for you to understand that although it's hard, that's not what we're walking out. And that's not what we're walking in. And that's not what we're hanging on to. And oftentimes we are given and have so many opportunities to share our stories to where we could be a light to others. And these are, these are two things I shared this week on Facebook that I feel might be of some use to some of you. You may see me struggle, but I can tell you now you'll never see me quit. I won't. I don't have that makeup in me. I might take a break, I might do a little self-care or do what I need to do to get myself back on track, but there, you will never see me quit, nor will you see the mountain man quit. It's, it's easy to want to quit when you're in a hard place. It's easy to want to put yourself in the corner and, and rock when we're going through really tough stuff. And, and I know there's a lot of people, even joining me here, that are going through a lot of tough stuff. I've walked through so many different things, but looking back in, on, on my past, I can see how God has prepared me for this place and, and how God has built in me the warrior to fight in this place. And it's through his word and through my relationship with him and through the closeness. I didn't always have that. In those other walks in my life, I was rocking in corners or fighting to not rock in corners. Um, but our our life experiences build us up to be able to endure what 
life has ahead for us. And sometimes that's a scary thought because some of the stuff I've gone through already in life was really hard stuff. And I look back and I do chuckle about that because it was hard stuff and it, and it has always made me say, you know, dang, what's ahead? Here I am. This is what's ahead. But, you know, and there may be harder things ahead, but you know what? I know I'll be prepared for it. I know that he's strengthening me and building the warrior in me who is not going to quit. The other thing that I thought was really cool that I found was I choose to be unstoppable. I am bigger than my concerns and worries. The strength of others inspire me daily. I focus on my goal. I trust my intuition and I live a courageous life. I'm going to share that later underneath here. That's what we need to do. We need, we need to fight through these places in our lives. And if you're in a good place right now, just be empowered. Be empowered. Share your story. Be courageous. Be happy. You know, and I'm not saying this to like add the doom. Things will change. Learn from all your experiences because there's a lot to learn from the good experiences in life too, not just from the rough patches. But our testimonies have a very large place in this world and we have the ability to reach others through them. Charles says praying peace of mind and heart. Okay, and Terry says, I want to thank everyone that lifts up prayers for me and my wife and our marriage and for my upcoming shoulder surgery. God bless each and every one of you. Pray for all who are on the prayer list, my dear friend Tammy Glenn and Austin. Thank you. Now, I didn't mention Terry earlier, but Terry and June desperately need prayer. And I did share this last week. Um, as Terry said, he has shoulder surgery coming up. Um, is it November 5th or the 9th? I'm, I've got a lot coming in. So help me so we have the date. But June is coming to care for him. And I asked last week that you guys help me pray that this is how God is going to divinely renew their marriage and reunite them. And, and this will give them the opportunity to be close and to communicate. So... So continue to lift them, and we will be praying for your surgery as well, Terry. But it is, it is our duty as Christians to help our brothers and sisters. And I just, I love our community of prayer warriors, and I love that people feel comfortable to come here and request prayer. So appreciate that greatly. And I keep getting knocked down, but I ask God to help me get back up. And I'm not giving up on God my wife and our marriage. I keep knocking on the door to God and I keep, and I'm going to keep coming until he opens the door. The fifth. Okay. So I was right. Okay. And, and you know what, Terry, that's all we can do. Glenn and I too keep getting knocked down. I'm going to share a little personal thing with you. The mountain boys was sick at school and with these jobs, um, just dissipating and disappearing on us. Um, I honestly did not have enough money to send him a, uh, I had to, when you send things to school, they have to be brand new. So I couldn't put a care package together because they would have tossed it. It has to be brand new um, supplements and such. And I didn't have enough money to do that. And that really hit home for me because I'm in a place where I can't help my family. Had I been able to do a care package, that would have been so different. I have such abundance of things here to help him, but because of the circumstances and situation. And that really, that really, um, I struggled with that. I struggled greatly with that because that is what moms do. We nurture our families and I was in a position where I couldn't. But I also, at the same time, was reading The Power of Positive Thinking, and it was on a chapter on how when a person, and it was actually not just that either, but also the Wim Hof that I shared on our page, there are ways that we can work with our bodies to heal, both through prayer and through uh, positive thinking. And I know a lot of people think that's kooky, but there is a lot of science behind that, and there is a lot more science on that coming out and I am living proof of that so we put all that together and uh, had Austin praying and we were praying and his cold is actually going away 
So although we are in hard places where God knocks us down, he gives us the resources we need to get back up. And he promises us that when we are down, he will help us get back up. No matter how many times we are down, he is there to either lift us, carry us, or give us the hand we need to get back up. And, and I know we are not the only ones walking out tough stuff. And that's why when I share these things, I share what's been working for us. I share how God's been nurturing us. I share our heart because I want you to know you're not alone. And I want you to know there are tools available that we can help ourselves. We can help each other. You know, um, Kelly shared a really awesome devotional with me this week. And, um, you know, sharing what is, what is nurturing us with others can be really helpful too if you know people going through a hard time. Psalms 145 is a great read from the hunting blind. And yes, I do take my phone with me because I'm recording and my Bible is on my phone. And once it got a little light so that I wasn't beaming in the, in the blind, I did read that. And it was a very wholesome place to read it. Being out in nature, being where the sun is shining on you and just feeling his heat, his love, his mercy, his grace, and reading his word can be very powerful. Seeking something positive, seeking seeking all positive really. I, I, I can't be around negativity when I am going through a hard time because it's a, it's a demon seed. It's something that's very quickly going to pull us down. I seek positive and I am trying through my hard time while I am seeking the positive and I am finding things that are nurturing my soul and my being that I'm sharing them. And that's why you're seeing a lot more positive things being shared both on my personal page on Positively Encouraging by Treyer Wilderness and on our Treyer Wilderness page. But learning to have the tools we need to seek God and to find our joy and happiness through the hard times is really important. And obeying Him. Obeying Him is the hardest thing. You know, we were told to wait in a time where waiting was, was hard. But we were both in a place of obedience. We were both in a place of wanting so badly to walk out His will, not ours, that we, we just listen. It takes a lot to get to that place. But the more you seek him and the more you have a relationship with him, and to some of you that may be weird. How do you have a relationship with him? How do you speak to him? I speak to him no differently than I am speaking to you right now. When you need to talk to him, you just talk to him. If, you need to, if you're at work and you don't want to talk out loud, just do it in your head. But... I'm often talking to him out loud. I'm in, I, I'm in a place where there's nobody else around here to hear me other than my cats and my dogs. The mountain man is out trapping. If I decide to talk to God right now out loud, you know, I do. I do. And I want to share this with you. I shared this last week. Anything I've asked you to do, this is God talking. Anything I've asked you to do, I've given you the grace to do. If the grace is not there, come to me and make sure that what you're doing is what I have called you to do. A great way to tell if we are walking in his will or not. Don't carry things that are not yours to carry. Give them to me. Live out your life doing what I am calling you to do, taking one season at a time. We all have different seasons in our lives. The good, the bad, the ugly you know they're all different seasons they're not going to last forever this is not going to last forever this is going to move on and and we will look back on this um i know that we will look back on this with a great appreciation for all that came from here and that's learning to respect your rough patches um they have purpose and they have meaning and when you follow that simple thing that I just shared, God gives us the grace to handle what he gives us. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be um, a cakewalk or a bed of roses. But he will give us what we need to make it through if we are willing to seek him. And the thing is, we aren't supposed to carry all these burdens. We're supposed to put them at his feet and let him take care of them. And we're supposed to go about doing what he is leading us to do if we're willing to listen. And he will take care of all the stuff in the background. So as you're going through a rough time and you think you're all alone, 
He is doing a million and a half things in the background while you are going through your experiences. And these are seasons, like I said, they will not last forever. And you are not alone. And even though many of us go through different walks and different hard times, the emotions that we experience are going to parallel regardless what we're walking out. I find that so often. Uh, I have so many friends that are going through different things. Even Starry and I, you know, in some ways our walk is similar with our health, but there are other circumstances we're going through. But it's so amazing how God uses each of us, as well as many of you, to nurture each other while we're going through an experience. And even though your experience is different, your emotional effects from that walk are um, very similar and and we can nurture each other even though our walks are different and that's important awesome you guys are commuting communicating together good morning Sanford and Nikki I guess it's afternoon now oh I just saw your message Terry that is so sweet of you thank you so much Guys, I hope you gain something from this. You know, I feel God lead me into sharing different things with you guys and, and sharing on certain subjects. And, you know, it was really powerful. A couple weeks ago, I wasn't going to go live. I felt more awful than I had in a long time. And it's been hard. You know, my 18-hour drive taking the mountain boy to school did me in for three days. I was really, really um, feeling the effects of that. And, you know, it's just weird. My, my, my health is weird. You know, you would have thought that getting that elk out and being that sore, that that would have um, affected me as well. But instead, it pushed me forward. So I never really know. But the thing is, I, feed, I try to feed you guys from whatever place I'm in and God prompted me the other week to feed you from a very low place and what was really crazy is we were on for almost two hours and I could not get that out I just got that out this week on YouTube and the comments that came from that as far as it being timely and necessary and how it nurtured other people God uses it's just it's amazing to me to see how God uses me, the mountain man, how he uses many of you, how he uses these circumstances, how he feeds me and shares me the information that needs to be heard, and how so many of you are are gaining from it and also nurturing me through it. It's just, it's an amazing thing to see. It's an amazing thing to see. And um, God is so present in our lives here and I know and I feel it that he is present here with us now but he's also present in your lives and this opportunity to share every week has been so amazing and to see just to see what's coming from it so I hope you got something from this today if you are going through a hard time please know you're not alone Please know that God does love you, that he is there, and that he is nurturing you, and that he is loving you. Sometimes we just need to let him love us. Sometimes we're afraid to accept him for what he is, even though we can't see him, that he's there. Sometimes we're afraid to trust that he's doing anything for us, or we are angry at him for our situation. But I want to encourage you guys to seek him, because like I said to you, I don't know where we would be if we didn't have him in our lives. This walk would have been so, so different. And, you know, it is a rough spot to be in. But to see his hand and to be able to celebrate the blessings and to be able to high five over an elk harvest and the new products we have coming, I can't wait to show these to you. You guys, you will, I know many of you will be like, so fitting. And you need to know that these are things that they are God inspired. So when you see how fitting they are to what I've been talking about and our situation and everything, you will see how God is shining through our lives. It's just so awesome. It's so, so awesome. So anyway, 
I'm going to jump off of here and let you guys get back to your day because we've been on here a long time. But thank you for joining me. I'm going to say a prayer and uh, you guys can get back to your day. Papa, I just thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. What you do in each of our lives, how you nurture each of us and how through nurturing each of us, you nurture us all as a whole. You are showing miracles uh, so broadly through each of our lives and how you're working in each of our lives. And as I said, we may not be walking the same walk, but our emotions and our need for you is the same. And we're just so grateful for your presence, for your blessing in our lives, for the subtle and not so subtle nudges that you give us to walk out your will and to do special things as a child of yours. I just ask that you strengthen everybody out there, those that are going through tough walks. Just be with them, heal them, love them, comfort them, and give them the warrior strength that you've given me. And just be with everyone. Help them to learn how to seek you better if that is their need. Help them to in, you know, enrich their walk with you by reading your word. And help them to understand that their testimony, regardless how small or large, can change a life. And I just encourage them through you to give them the strength they need to share their testimony and just thank you for what you do here thank you for strengthening me today to go live and just what you're going to do in each of our lives thank you for the many blessings you've given us and thank you for how you work in each and every one of our lives blessing us and touching us healing us delivering us and helping us walk through each of the seasons of life just ask that you keep your hand of protection over everyone. Bless them, love them, and we thank you for what you're going to do. And we ask this in the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, guys. Let's see here. Exciting to see what you are bringing to your store. Let us know when it's there. I will do that. We're hoping later this week, um, between hunting and working, it's kind of hard. We have a very small window, um, but it's coming together, and they're looking really awesome, um, and I'm really excited, really, really excited. It's just such a God thing, and I know God, I feel, I feel God is going to use this in some way, uh, so we will see. It's, it's all, it's, it, it's his. We're just working and walking it out. So guys, I wish you all a very, very blessed day. I, I, those of you that are out there struggling, I'm praying for great strength for you to overcome your obstacles, to have the strength to walk through your obstacles. And I'm praying for you to seek him more because that's where the answers are. But guys, I love you all. I thank you for taking the time to be here today. And I will see you next Wednesday at our normally scheduled time of 1030 Pacific, unless I message otherwise. All right, guys, take care and God bless. Love you all.